Hi everybody uh, and welcome. We're going to speak today. We have Ben from Bible Outreach and Yaya from Speakers Corner and we're going to speak about salvation from our own religious viewpoints and maybe debate a couple of the finer points. So with that said, over to Ben. He's going to give his opening statement and followed by Yaya and then back to me. Ben? Yeah, thanks Kay. So as Kay just mentioned, we're talking about salvation according to Christianity and also Islam because it's important because there is no there's no greater question than where are we going to spend eternity so when we look at the both faiths Islam and Christianity and we examine the doctrine of salvation according to both faiths it's important to notice which one of these is consistent with the nature of God because if our faith is from God then the doctrine of salvation should show two things it should show that both God is just and merciful because God to be God has to be perfect in all of his attributes which includes justice and mercy. <clears throat> so let's for a moment look at the Christian perspective. According to the Christian faith, sorry, I thought you said something. Oh, sorry. That's your opening. That's your opening. No, no, not yet. No, no, no. According to the Your audio is gone. Um, we have all sinned. Ben, ben. We are fallen mankind. We are... Is that better now? Is that right. better? I can, yeah, um, I can hear you. Can you hear me? It's, I can I hear, hear you, you now. Now you're moving. Yeah. Okay. You now can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll, okay, I'll, okay. From the Christian so, perspective, boom. Okay. So from the Christian perspective, all of mankind has sinned. And because we have sinned, we have sh fallen short of God's perfect standard. Romans 3 chapter 23 says all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So because we have all sinned, we therefore have a sin debt. And it's a debt that we can't pay our, ourselves, is the teaching of the Bible. So because of this, God, as I mentioned earlier, being both just and merciful, made a way for us to be free from this sin debt that we have. And he'd done that, as the Christian teaching says, by sending his son who never sinned. Therefore, he did not have a sin debt. So therefore, he was able to bear our sin debt upon himself because it wouldn't make sense for Ben to pay the debt of Yaya because I have my own debt, so it wouldn't work. It would take someone who's perfect without a debt to take the debt of someone else. So because Jesus kept the law perfectly, he was sinless and able to bear our sins upon himself, which he did at the cross. And because <clears throat> at the cross is really the, 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 uh, the, 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 the core of Christianity, because at the cross is where God's justice and mercy meet without contradiction. And I'll say in Islam, we don't have that. They contradict each other. In Christianity, God's justice and mercy, God's mercy is also kept because at the cross, we can obtain mercy. So therefore, God's perfect mercy is also kept, which is different from the Islamic perspective, as you're about to tell us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, regarding salvation, salvation, it should rely on justice and mercy and love and forgiveness. And uh, what Ben, he said, in Islamic, uh, we, we, God create us not perfect and we will never be perfect because we have the ability to sin and repent and God gave us the opportunity to redeem ourselves when we repent sincerely to him and he would forgive us for free as he know our weaknesses and our desire which which sometimes can take over so the way of salvation and Islam is very easy. As long as we sin, we reflect upon what we have done, we regret it, we, with sincerity, repent with tears and ask the Almighty God with his forgiveness, with his love, with his mercy, and he would forgive us. 
regarding regarding what Ben said, uh, we are fall short of uh, glory of God because He's just and merciful. So He sent His Son, who is innocent and never sinned, to die for us on the cross to meet to meet the justice and and mercy. And I find it odd he saying that because I have a child. If my child sin against me, and he come to me and he tell me, uh, Father, uh, I am very sorry. Uh, I don't mistake. Uh, please forgive me because I am his father. I am older than him. I'm more wiser than him. I would understand that he make a mistake, and I would forgive him. I'm not going to ask my my other son which is younger to to be punished for his elder elder uh, brother fault so everyone everyone should bear their own fault and according to the bible the father they don't bear the guilt of the son and the son they don't bear the guilt of the father so the justice must be each each person about what he's doing and about his deed and his intention would be repent and God with his mercy with his wisdom with his justice can forgive for free instead of building salvation on an innocent person to die for somebody else which is unjust to the son the father will be unjust to the son who die for no reason he's innocent the sinner go free and uh, even if they repent god the father are not able to accept their repentance which is not not the standard because god at the in the beginning he create us not perfect and if he want us to come to uh, not to fall and uh, off short of his glory he should create us perfect and ask us to be perfect but when he create us not perfect and asking us to come to his level and we will become short that mean god is giving us the burden of something we cannot bear because he knew already that we are going to sin soon or later because of our a uh, weak uh, human nature okay so is that your opening so i'd like to yes. counter two points uh which you mentioned you said quite clearly that uh we cannot um you know we shouldn't uh, carry the burdens of another it's what you said or carry the sins for another so uh the quran confirms what you says in 35 18 it says and no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another and if a heavily laden soul calls another to carry some of its load nothing of it will be carried even if he should be a close relative however uh in the book of miscellany um i i'm going to get the reference it's muslim um as in sahih muslim it says that abu musa al ashari um reports that the messenger of allah said on the day of resurrection allah will deliver to every muslim a jew or a christian and say this is your ransom from hellfire another narration is that muhammad says there would come people amongst the muslims on the day of resurrection with sins as heavy as a mountain and allah would forgive them so basically what we're what i see there and i could get a better narration if if you would like is that allah will take the sins like a mountain from the muslims and put them onto a jew or a christian therefore uh, negating or contradicting the quran which tells us that we cannot carry the burden of another the other thing you spoke about was if your child your youngest child for example came to you and said you repeatedly also said that we are not created perfect that's incorrect from a christian um narrative perspective we were created in the image of a perfect god we fell from grace as a result of Eve's temptation by the serpent. 
therefore so we were created good and god knows our future sins he tells cain um sin is crouching at your door he knows that it's coming for him and he tries to warn mankind against the sin that is in wait in our in our very nature after the fall so adam and eve originally were perfect um and yet they fell from grace as we all did so i guess i'm going to leave this segment with by saying that sin enters the world through adam and it is defeated in christ he's referred to as the second adam uh over to you ben yeah um yeah i'm going to touch on those points as well yeah yeah <clears throat> um you said um it's not just for jesus to be punished in the place of sinners well let's bear this in mind our presupposition as christians is that jesus is god so for someone to be um forgiven the, the if someone's offended against only the offended party can show mercy i think the analogy you used at yaya is quite faulty i think a more correct analogy would be this let, let, let's imagine i'm in your house with your family and let's imagine you know we're messing about and i knock over your tv and i break your tv if you said if i said yaya i'm so sorry here's 200 pounds to go buy another tv that wouldn't be you showing me mercy or forgiveness that would be you accepting a payment mercy and forgiveness would be you saying ben don't worry about that i'll replace it I'll, I'll fix what's broken myself which is what we have in christianity we don't have to say god i'll give you this therefore i can have salvation rather god says i'm going to fix the mess you've made myself so that's a true example of mercy because if it's real mercy it has to be freely given it can't be something worked for otherwise that's wages which is what you have in islam in christianity we have real mercy which goes back to my original point that in christianity we have a real just and merciful god in islam we don't have that um you mentioned um do, 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 do. um you said that god asking us to be good enough to go to heaven is, is unrealistic it's unfair because he knows we're faulty well yes that's what we have in christianity literally because god knows we aren't good enough he comes down in human flesh to do what we couldn't and that's to fix where we messed up in islam you have a god who asks you to be so perfect you can go to heaven because you have to do good deeds and things like this so to, to put those accusations against the christian faith fouls because it's not true but if we simply turn that standard around and apply that back to the quran it fits quite appropriately um can i ask a question Kay, or do you want to move on uh i guess we could do that in the next round so yeah after go, yaya, go ahead yaya. okay yaya after you sir i would like to ask you one question is the father is the father just to his son to accept his blood for somebody else uh sin okay we'll we, i'll answer that in my turn and so will ben but you could is that your time yeah. finished okay yeah. I, uh, no no i okay. i would like both of you i would like both of you to answer this question then i will comment okay well, so it's now my turn sorry yes. ben okay so uh my first point uh, right okay with regards to the father and the son they are two members of the one godhead there is uh only a distinction in christ on earth he is eternal um he's still as divine as he ever was but we are told in the old testament that if a man sins for his own sin he must sacrifice a lamb he must get a scapegoat or a lamb and sacrifice them for this sin um but god tells us fear not i i know you can't do it basically but i will send you a perfect lamb and the perfect lamb will be his son not because he is born on this earth but because he is the eternal son so it, to think in terms of father and son is is not as clear cut as it sounds because there was never a time when there was only a father there was always a father and a son and a holy spirit so the man god who came to earth the word that became flesh is not uh, an inferior of or like it's just um yeah he's not being sacrificed christ alone tells us i have authority to lay down my life and i will take it back up again so he's not being given as a ransom he is willingly laying down his own life um yeah so that's my answer to that my one further point which i'd like you to answer yaya when it comes around to you is this um abu Huraira in uh, sahih muslim 2816 book 52 hadith 68 he says there is none whose deeds alone can secure salvation for him 
they said, Allah's messenger, not even you. Thereupon he said, not even I, but that the mercy of Allah should take hold of me. Whereas we are told, I believe it's in the Quran, that Islam has a system of works and faith. So it's not enough to believe in Allah. It's not enough to submit to his will. You must produce these good works, um, which is a kind of could be ex extricated from the Bible if you didn't read it in terms of salvation. So uh, in that case, how can anyone work enough or repent enough uh, to do their, like, I, as a Christian, I see the need for a real divine savior because mankind is so terribly sinful that God cannot tolerate any sin whatsoever. But Ben? Yeah, I'll, I'll pick up two points. Um, I will quickly touch on the question, but then um, I'd like to ask a question, if that's okay as well. Um, you said, is it just for God to, um, you know, have his son punished? I think Kay's answer was really adequate and really, really good. But um, I would also just add one thing that um, you're saying, is it just? If you want justice as a sinner, Yaya, then all of mankind should go to hell. It's because of mercy his son was sacrificed on the cross. So if you want justice, then I'm sorry, you're going to hell. If you want mercy, then accept what God done for you through his son on the cross. That's the problem you're having. But Kay rightly pointed out an error in the um, Islamic understanding of salvation. But I'd like to point out an internal contradiction. Because I think that the Islamic sources in my own reading of them shows that they are um, self-contradictory and that you, you, you really, when you read the Islamic sources, you get a kind of mixed message how to be saved. I think if you were just to read the Quran, you wouldn't really know how you go to heaven because we, even within the same chapter, which I'm about to show you, you have a contradictory way of salvation. In Surah 4, chapter 4, uh, chapter 4 verse 48, it says, Allah does not forgive those who associate any partners with him. But then we have in the very same chapter in verse 153, it says, the people of the scripture ask you to bring down to them a book from heaven, but they had asked Moses even greater than that and said, show us Allah outright, so that the thunderbolt struck them for their wrongdoing. Then they took the car for worship after clear evidences and, worship, uh, and worshipped it, basically, and we pardoned that. So in one verse, verse 48, it says Allah will not pardon that sin, then, in, you know, uh, I, I, just over a hundred verses later in the same chapter even he contradicts that and says yes I've forgiven that sin but then when you continue reading it's like the author of the Quran somehow forgot what he previously revealed because then he goes back to saying that um, do not despair Allah forgives all sins in verse in chapter 39 verse 53 so in the same chapter you have two contradictory statements this sin will not be forgiven then this sin will be forgiven you carry on reading then all sins will be forgiven so I don't think you can really make heads or tails as to what can be forgiven and what you should do for salvation. I think the Islamic source is contradictory and leaves you wanting. Yeah, yeah. You're done? Did you answer that? You're done? Okay. Uh, I guess both of you uh, try to avoid to answer direct a question with very short, very short yes or no. The father is not just with the son because no blood, no salvation, according to you. That means God wants a price tag for his forgiveness. And his forgiveness is rely on blood. Because even if you repent and you do good deed, God would not accept it from you. So God, he doesn't love you. He doesn't love the son. He doesn't love the world. He loves blood because the blood is the price to bribe him to forgive mm. and this is this is uh, there's no mercy no justice uh, and no love for anyone but for the blood why i say that i say that because without the shed of blood of an innocent son you wouldn't be granted forgiveness and you said jesus came willingly and he uh, gave his life. Yes. Jesus, I will remind you that Jesus, he spent the majority of the night uh, praying for the Father to be saved from the death, the humiliation death on the cross. And God, 
God, according to you, the Father want him dead, and he let the sinner, let the Roman and the Jew crucify him so he can get his blood. Jesus, if he come willingly, Jesus, if he, if he come willingly to die, that he commit suicide. And yeah. if some, someone, someone commits suicide and kill himself, that means he deserves an eternal hellfire. You said Jesus is God. Jesus, if he is God, God is immortal. He wouldn't die. If he take on the flesh and he's still a God, that means he's a false God. Because God is immortal, eternal, ever living. Jesus is equal to the Father, you said. Jesus teach the Father is greater than the Son, greater than all, than I, all the creation. I don't understand why you nod your, your head and, uh, and uh, make up his way. Yeah. Because Jesus, Jesus clearly said, Jesus, he, he, the Father is, is greater than I, than yes. the Son. Yes. And Jesus teach, the, Jesus teach, he is submissive to the Father. The Father never submissive to the Son. Uh, Jesus worship and fell on his face to worship the Father. The Father never fall on his face to worship because he's invisible and he live in approachable light. So no one can see. And God, no one can see God and God, live. All these points. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you spoke about the Trinity. Uh, Jesus teach the Lord our God is one. He didn't teach the Lord our God is one and three. I, I am one of them. I am one of the three. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You uh, can't no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I'm not here to I hear your no to points. I'm here to count, count your points. You're making far too many. So let me pick uh, up on some of the let's points. Be fair. No, yeah, yeah, let's be fair. Let's, Honestly, let's be yeah, fair. yeah, you've had more time than us. So let me try to count your points. Otherwise, we're just talking past each other uh, with respect. So Christ the man is who I was talking about. When I referred to the co-equality within the Godhead, I was talking about the eternal son who is even in his form before he was incarnated as Christ. So Christ is always a male human God figure. The word is eternal. The eternal son is from the beginning and to the end. When Christ is on earth, we're told in Hebrews 1 and 2, he himself is made lesser than the angels as a fleshly being, but his divinity remains immortal and intact. So when he dies on the cross, his flesh dies to the world. There's no more life in it. His spirit, the eternal nature of him, his essence, does not die because we are told where it goes and what it does. He is bodily resurrected on the third day. So no suicide victim comes back to life on the third day. I think it's quite uh, an incorrect exegesis to say that he commits suicide. He is God. When he says the father alike, when he speaks of God, he is that God. When he dies again, he, he resumes the full glory of the Godhead rather than just the um, outward appearance of a man, which is, is, you know, it's just for 33 short years. So I say that he has all authority on in heaven and on earth with which to lay his own life down, with which to bring it back up again. It's not only him who uh, resurrects. We're told in another place that the spirit of God uh, resurrects him. We're told in another place the father. And that's the perfect example of the triune God working in, to one accord in one essence. And up to be frank, I can't remember all the other points. Ben, I hope you've got a pen. Yeah, I've, I've tried to. What you've done, Yaya, you've done the classic shotgun tactic. I'll shoot you with about 100 bullets and see if one will stick. Um, you, you mentioned a few different things. Uh, God doesn't love because he wants blood and blood and all that oh, kind of yeah. stuff he said. Dracula. Well, well, no, it's, it's because God loves that he comes down in human flesh and dies on the cross. It, that's because of his love. If he didn't love, then he'd let us all go to hell and go, go our own way. But because he loves, he steps down 
in human flesh and takes the punishment we deserve. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 8 says that although he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God something to grasp onto, but rather he emptied himself, took on the form of a servant and died on the cross. He'd done that out of love, not out of hate. Um, what else did he say? Um, do, 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 you know, you're basically trying to make, make out that Jesus didn't really expect to go on the cross. You know, he wanted, he wanted to get off the cross was your point, basically. Um, well, Jesus actually said, you know, his whole entire ministry that he will go on the cross. Matthew chapter 26, verse 2 says, um, this is Jesus' own words. You know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man is to be handed over for crucifixion. Mark chapter 15, verse 22 um, I use Mark because many Muslims will say, well, the, the, the Jesus you see in John, for example, is a very different Jesus to the one you see in Mark. There's been an evolution among the Gospels. So I'm going to use the earliest um, Gospel here, which is Mark chapter 15, verse 22, which says, Then they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which is translated the place of the skull. Verse 23, they, they tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Verse 24, and they crucified him. And divided up his garments and let's bear this in mind that the dividing up of the garments the crucifixion was actually prophesied um you know a thousand or so years before crucifixion was even invented uh, the crucifixion was actually invented by the phoenicians and the romans adopted it because it was such a cruel tactic to kill people with um, in psalm 22 we have jesus um, when jesus is on the cross and he says uh, in the original language eli eli lama sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's not saying those words because he, God has left him or he's, he's scared to go on the cross. He's <laughs> saying these words because he's quoting Psalm 22, which every good Jew will know. It's like me, if I sing Amazing Grace in a church, all the Christians are going to finish the words. So when he quoted Psalm 22 there, that funny and funnily enough begins with those exact words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's talking about a, chapter, a Psalm 22, which talks about the crucifixion. It goes on to say, they pierced my hands and my feet. This is describing an event that um, wasn't actually around at the time. Crucifixion wasn't invented until the Phoenicians much later. So Jesus from the very get-go knew he was going to be crucified. He even quoted the Psalm talking about crucifixion to happen while he was on the cross himself. His whole entire ministry was to come live the perfect life for 33 something years. We couldn't live for 33 something seconds, fulfill the law and then die on the cross in our place to set sinners free it's not out of hatred or blood or blood or whatever you said you've done that that's out of love you said it's not love and give me something more loving than that yeah yeah Who? yeah Is your uh, yes you said the uh, jesus the flesh died the spirit yes. did, didn't die actually all our spirit including you when you die your spirit doesn't die the spirit always go back because our spirit is coming from God and the spirit will never die. So only the, if I agree with you, only the flesh die. But I want to remind you that the father, he didn't die, no. but the son died. So if the I, if, 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 if you the man. Christ the man, if Christ the man, and the same time he's 100% God and 100% man, the 100% man died. Yes. The, hundred, the other 100% is still alive? Yes. Or it, it died It died with, with the flesh of, uh, of uh, the son? Yeah, the, the, answer, the argument you're trying to make, Yaya, is that death means non-existence. You don't believe, and we don't believe, that when we die, that's it, we cease to exist. So to say because the body of Christ died on the cross, that therefore must mean, you know, he's, he's dead and gone. That's not true. We believe that we believe in the hypostatic union, um, which, is, which is the joint natures, the, 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 the uh, human nature of Christ, the divine nature of Christ. That's called the hypostatic union. So when we believe Jesus died on the cross, we don't believe the, you know, his eternal nature ceased to exist. We believe he's, he died in his human flesh. There's no issue there. And you say, one second, you're trying to say, well, you know, the Father, this, that, and the other, did the Spirit, this, that, and the other. That would only work from a Unitarian perspective. We are Trinitarians. So we can say that when Jesus died on the cross as the second person of the Trinity, heaven wasn't empty. 
the throne wasn't empty. It wasn't like um, the universe was left without someone at the steering wheel. We, we are Trinitarians, we are not Unitarians. So your argument would only work if we were Unitarians, but unfortunately for you, we're Trinitarians. So it's quite fitting to say the second person on, uh, in human flesh can die on the cross. Right. I would, I would like, I would like no. to go. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Do you want to just wrap up what you were saying Sorry. and then it's my turn? Uh, when I'm saying something, I would like to finish what I'm saying before somebody step in. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, Jesus, peace upon him, teach the Lord our God is one God, as all the previous all the previous prophet the lord our god is one and jesus said my god and your god my father and your father and jesus cannot be equal to god as he teach that he submit serve obey serve glorify and fell on his face to worship the father who art in heaven and not on earth and Jesus, when he teach people how to pray, he tells them, go to your room and pray to your father who is unseen. And Jesus was seen. So he is not God or part not of the God. Father, because yeah, yeah. He, please, can, can you please, can right. you please well, you're supposed allow to me to finish? Up now, actually, because I didn't get a turn at all. So. If, you, if you want to go, if you want to go, like we can have another one. We are talking That's about right. salvation. Yes, I mean, we're having a few minutes each. So what I'm saying is Ben interjected, but I didn't speak at all. So like if you just wrap up rather than doing a, you've gone on to this new thing. Like if you just. Okay, okay. Yeah. What, what I want to wrap up, salvation according to Jesus, salvation according to Jesus, you can see it in John 17, 3, John 6, 29, John 12, 44, plus 50, John 3, 5, Matthew 5, 17, 20, Matthew 25, 46, Luke 10, 27, 28, and Luke 13, 3, plus 5. This is the salvation according to Jesus, but you are follower of the salvation of Paul, which rely on the blood and okay. i will give you right, i will give you i will give you three uh, a few reference for the viewer to check paul salvation okay. hebrew 9 9 22 26 roman 6 23 roman 3 23 25 and ephesians 2 8 10 yeah, yeah. Okay then. Great, yeah, yeah. Thanks ever so much for that. Right, I'm now going to give my answer because I just I kind of zoned out because I know that Christ preaches his own cruci crucifixion and resurrection. For you to argue against it means that on some deeper level you realise that that is the means of salvation. The true means of salvation comes through the blood of Christ. Uh, God, as in the Father, Son, and Spirit, because as Christians we can legitimately describe jesus as god the father as god the spirit as god but god in all his triune nature decides he cannot have sin anywhere near to him he cannot be in the presence of sin we are told that we are washed by the blood of christ so the blood of christ means that on judgment day please god when he looks to me he won't see my sin at all he will see the blood of Christ. He will see his beloved son whom he had begotten and he will see the sacrifice therein. But coming back to Islam, because uh, that's, you know, the topic of our debate also, I'd like to say this, that um, on, in the book of On Vows and Oaths, let me see if there's a reference for everybody. It's Sahih and it's uh, Termidi and the reference is book 20, Hadith 26, but it's uh, Termidi 1547. So it says this, Abu Amama and other than him from the companions of the prophet narrated that the prophet said, any Muslim man who frees a Muslim man, then it is his salvation from the fire. Each of his limbs suffices for a limb of himself. And any Muslim man that frees two Muslim women, then are his salvation 
from the fire. Each of their limbs suffices for a limb of himself. And any Muslim woman that frees a Muslim woman, then she is her salvation from that fire. Each of her limbs suffices from, uh, for a limb of herself. So on that subject, I'd like to touch upon the fact that no one can carry the burden of another. So saving somebody shouldn't uh, give you any salvation. Also, the it's fact that it's, would be. Excuse me, excuse me. So any Muslim man who rescues another Muslim man or two women, because they're only worth half as much, will be saved from hellfire. His mountain of sins doesn't need to be put onto a Jew or Christian. He's got a free pass. He gets straight in. That's um, a method of works. And as Christians, we don't believe in works-based salvation. Jews and Muslims do have a legalistic sense. And this is what I'm going to close on. And then you two guys can have one more time, uh, turn. This is my uh, bottom line case to you, Yaya, in terms of Christianity. So as a person who has Sharia within your own religion, you understand the legal terminology of God. We, okay. are, we have sinned. The wages, okay. the penalty for our sin is the death sentence. We must die. We're going to the electric chair, whatever, however you want to think of it. So we've been destined to die. And yet an advocate comes in for us. God himself takes himself out of the judgment seat. He steps into the courtroom and he uh, pleads our case. He, he, so the judge, even a human judge must remain uh, above the law in, in respect. If he, if he lets a murderer go, he's not a just God, even if the murderer is his son, his brother. But in order to have mercy, he will allow an advocate, a perfect lamb to come and pay the fine. So instead of the death penalty, we're allowed to take a penalty charge notice and Christ came and paid that fine. And on the cross, his last words were, it is finished. The debt has been paid for those who are called according to his purpose, for those who recognize him as God, repent from their sins um, and trust alone in Christ as a means of salvation and a way to God. So I'm going to pass it to Ben. That's my closing statement. Thank you so much. I'm sure it's going to be your turn again. Before you go, just two verses. Before you go. And then you, Ben, wrap up. Yeah, before you go, Islam salvation, it is on a good deed and belief and oneness of God. Okay? Okay. Regardless of Sahih or Bukhari or whatever. We rely on, on Quran. Uh, second point, the father is the murderer as he gave his son to die. So the father is the biggest I'll sinner. You, yeah, he, yeah. Is, Repent. He, he sent his son to die to save the world. That means okay. he sent the son, he is responsible for the murder of his son on the cross. And okay. he's part of it because he's part of it because he didn't save him as the, the, the old scripture says that he will send his angel and they will save him and yes. carry him with his hand. So the father, he is the, a killer, said this because he is the one. Yeah, 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 it's my turn to speak. You can go now. You can go now. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's not going. She's just saying she's finishing. I was finishing my part. Yes, now it's, now it's, now it's my turn. Okay. you're closing. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna to touch on a few things he brought up because I can't allow him to get away with the things he just said. He's butchered the Bible. Um, you said that um, Jesus, you know, Jesus showed them how to pray. Yeah, yeah. I will me yeah, yeah. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. 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 You said that you said that Jesus showed them how to pray, and um, you said only pray to God. This that, and the other. Yes, as God in flesh, he's not going to become an atheist. He's going to continue his earthly relationship with his father through earthly means, which would, which, which would be prayer. Now, talking about the prayer of Jesus, you're trying to use John to prove Jesus prayed like a Muslim. Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14 said, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the father may be glorified in the son. So you cannot believe Jesus said those words because Jesus said, pray to one the Father. But he also said, whatever you ask me in my name, I will do it. So here Jesus is saying he will answer our prayers if we pray to him. We see this in the very next book of the Bible, Acts chapter 7, where Stephen's being stoned to death. His final words are a prayer. He says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. You cannot believe Jesus said those words, yet you use the verses around it out of context to make a point. You said John 17, 3. I've answered that in the one-on-one -on -one debate we had, which is absolutely ridiculous. The two verses before that, Jesus says, 
um, the, uh, the he, the God is his father and he is God's son. You cannot believe Jesus said those words. The two verses after in verses four and five, Jesus says, um, now father, give me the glory I had with you before the world began. You cannot believe Jesus said those words. You take the verse in the middle, drag it, kicking and screaming out of its context, give it a meaning it's never meant to have, to try and fit your narrative. That's called butchering the Bible. You said John chapter three, verse five, tells us how Jesus uh, talks about salvation. John chapter three, verse five says that um, you should be born of water and blood. It doesn't say you are saved by works of the law or anything like that that sounds Islamic. That verse, I don't know why he brought it up. It doesn't fit anything. You know, you shouldn't have used that as an argument. It's, it's a mute point. It doesn't make sense to use that as an argument. Um, you're saying that um, God, is a, God is a killer for killing his son. Well, let's turn this logic around for a moment. You believe, according to Surah 4157, that it's Allah who made it appear to them that Jesus was crucified. So if you want to blame anyone for thinking Jesus was crucified, blame your own God. Don't blame the God who sent his son in love to be crucified. Blame your own God. So the point doesn't stand. Now you keep, I've noticed this twice now, Kay asked you questions, I asked you questions. You've not actually answered any of the point we said. You seem to be throwing your hands up in the air, shotgun, shotgunning us with a load of verses that actually have nothing to do with salvation, most of them. Um, but you don't actually answer any of our, any of our points. I'll bring you back to the points we've made. Answer Kay's question that she asked you. Answer the question I made. You're saying salvation is clear according to the Quran, but according to chapter 4, just in and of itself, it's not clear. In verse 48, it says, God does not <coughs> forgive anyone. It says, God does not forgive anyone who associates partners with him. In the very next, in, in the exact same chapter, it says that God forgave people for worshipping a golden calf. That is associating a partner with God. So there we have in the same chapter, God doesn't forgive this sin, but then later on he does forgive this sin. Which one is it? And I think it's clear to see if this is being piecemeal to Muhammad over a period of time. If verse 153 is later than verse 48, it's clear to see maybe he forgot what he said in those previous verses, which is clear evidence is from a man. I don't say that to be harsh, but I'm just putting my case forward. Would you at least answer the points? Me and Kay have been courteous enough to answer your points pretty much step by step by step sufficiently. Would you please answer the points we've made sufficiently? Without going back to the Bible now, can go I to the Quran. Say, yeah, yeah, this will be the last segment of this and then I'm going to wrap it up because we literally will be cut off anyway because we have a limited period of time with this software. Okay. So you've got two minutes, sir. Please don't go back to the Bible verses. Just answer Ben's question, then we'll do a wrap up. I'm happy to, we can come back another day and carry on for okay. sure. Okay. As the Quran, there's two verses in the whole Quran, it say that God would not forgive anyone who associate another God with him. Two verses in the, Quran, in the whole Quran. But if someone associate a God with, with Allah, then he repent before he die, God will forgive him because he repent with sincerity. So God is all forgiver. But if someone die, on his belief there's another God was God, God wouldn't forgive him. And why would he, uh, what would God forgive him? And he's associating somebody else with God. And even in Isaiah, it teach you that there's only one God and there's no God beside me or before me. So there's only one God. Then my, my question, why you prefer a God who allow the sinner or the Roman and and uh, uh, the the Jew to kill his son, so he can shed his blood, and you reject a God who would save his son and forgive you at the same time. Why you want the blood to be this uh, only out of your salvation, and you forget that God mercy is bigger than anything you can do. I don't understand who teach you that the sin is bigger than God mercy. Then he talked about Father glory. Uh, Father glorifies the Son. The Son, he didn't, he wasn't glorified at all. Okay, he was a humiliated. the Bible though, Yaya. We, we kind of, you've answered beautifully, um, Ben. Okay, just, uh, just one, one minute. The Father, he didn't glorify the Son. The Son, he received only humiliation, death, on the cross. Thank you very Excellent. much. Thank you so much. Right, I'm going to wrap this up for all of us. Thank you very much for listening. I'm pretty sure. Have a nice evening. Okay, you too. I think the comments are going to be quite uh, interesting at least.
I'm sure that if, if you have any questions, anybody on the YouTube comment section, including Syed F11, hello, sir, then <laughs> I would like to see them. And we can always come back, please God, another time if the rapture doesn't happen or if, uh, you know, basically, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. I'm sure we'll answer all of your points. <laughs> <laughs> all right then god bless you both gentlemen i'm going to stop recording now and then i'm going to uh, chat to you quickly and we can go from there all right god bless everybody thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank share you and subscribe to bible outreach thank you very much. yaya has a channel but check it out anyway and uh we'll see you soon god bless you all bye-bye